Okay, so let's talk about how to build this birdhouse. Um, so what I'm doing there is just uh, stop and start cuts, really. It's just a bird that you get off uh, Amazon. It's like a wall tile cutter burr set. I believe they're in my Amazon store. So here I'm doing just um, with about, uh, I'd say, one eighth. I'd say about a quarter inch deep. Just cutting all the lines. This flower I drew on in like five seconds. I don't know what, well, maybe 10 seconds. I don't know what kind of flower it is. But um, anyways, so here's a cut salt uh, taper burr, extreme. So now I am removing the wood. I call it feathering it away, right? From your start cuts. Just removing the wood. Um, this will be a three part series birdhouse. This will be this number two video, obviously number two. And um, well, what is it? What do you call a gnome home birdhouse? How to carve, how to build a gnome home birdhouse for the beginning wood carver. Just uh, removing the wood. The more wood that you guys remove, the farther away from your cut mark, it's gonna look better, guys. My opinion anyways, and everything's in my opinion. So there, on the side there, I've decided to turn it into bricks, not uh, logs. So that you can see there, just how it's kind of sloped away. Slope it more. The more that you take away, farther away from the cut, see that big there? I got to still slope it more. There you go. Now you don't really see a slope, just very gradually so you can't notice it, looking straight on to it, right, from the human eye. Okay, so here's the roof. I'm just doing my uh, start cuts. Now I'm feathering the wood away to make each row of the shingles seem like the tip of the shingles is higher. This is Western Red Cedar. Then you see there, I just hit my thumb. Uh-oh. You guys, be careful with these tools, you know. But if I was, I want to show, I want to tell an example. If I was wearing a, a glove, that would have broke my flex shaft. Okay, it didn't even cut my thumb because you re, you you react fast, right? It stung a little bit. No big deal. Move on. Keep carving. But if you wear a glove and that hits your glove, your flex shaft's gonna snap. So would you rather have a little cut on your hand? Or would you rather have to deal with buying a new inner flex shaft for your flex shaft? I'd much rather have a little cut. But don't get me wrong. If you want to buy gloves and use gloves, use gloves. Okay, this is the Peter Blair mandrel with emery cloth sandpaper. I think I got like um, 140 grit on there or something. I got all sorts of different types of grits for different projects. So the higher grit that you uh, use... Like the finer it is, the softer the paper is and the faster it wears away with those on those uh, pads, right? But you see how well it works. I'm telling you, since I've, since not the Peter Blair mandrel, but since I started sanding with the mandrels, my life's changed in wood curving because I hate sanding. I used to hate doing it by hand and I always thought there has to be a better way. So I used to struggle with the ones Dremel made and other companies made until Pete made me one and then that's when uh, life really changed. Pete sells these. If you look in my description below, you'll see Pete Blair. I just made a video on them. And uh, just email Pete Blair and if you want to get them. The mandrel itself, he ships worldwide. But you see how fast, I think this is sped up twice the speed or four times the speed. There's the door. Sorry guys, I had lots of it pre-carved already. I thought I'd try setting up this video for this wood beginner wood carving birdhouse. Um, a different kind of way. So, anyways. Yep. You guys can do shaping with these uh, sanding mandrels too. Not crazy shaping, like detail shaping, but you can shape with them. Okay, so that's that. So that's about an hour's carving for me. I'm just. This is just going to be a quick birdhouse, right? This. It's an old whimsical gnome home fairy house birdhouse that's all it is these flowers i drew them out in two seconds you know you guys can get uh properly perfect flowers off the computer and uh, copy them onto here if you want it to be perfect 
I don't want this to be perfect. That's not my objective is. Actually, my objective is just to get this done and move on. <laughs> so anyways, now I'm going to pull out the uh, wood burner and do some wood burning. It's going to every, like my wood planks are going to be on a bigger scale just because I don't want to put too much time into this, right? So I'll have a couple more cookies, the oatmeal ones there. But I think they're dads with chocolate chips. I love these ones and some coffee and then I'll be back with the wood burner. Okay, so here's the wood burner that I use. This is the razor tip. It's the digital one. It's the P80, okay? This is uh, a pretty expensive um, wood burner, for sure. You guys don't need an expensive one like this. You can find those uh, cheap ones from China. When you're just getting going, you can get them for 40 bucks. This one, I, I put my own wire on there. You see there's screws there. Just take those, undo those screws, put your own wire in there. Um, if you f want to find out what uh, type of wire it is, maybe Peter Blair, if he watches this video, he can leave it in the comments below and I'll pin it. Because I forget the name. So you can hear that noise in the background too. That's a fan I got uh, blowing the smoke out of the window. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do all the undercuts around the bricks. This window is going to be a brick too. I forgot to carve them in. All the undercuts under here, here, the door, and then I'll do the board lines. So let's just get at it. This stuff, this is what takes a while to do, but this will really, if you guys are just beginner, this is when you're, it really steps up your, your game for like when you put your finish on it. Okay, so I'll get all these undercuts done around the window, the door and all this stuff, and then I'll be back and we'll put, we'll put our board lines in. Okay, you guys can see here I got all the bricks burnt in. You know, I put some extra textures on the bricks on the side just to make them look older. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint these white and gray. The bricks, I'm not too sure what color I'm going to paint the door. But this is just going to be like wood slats in here with like old nails in them. So let's, uh, I got pencil lines drawn on here. So I'm just going to follow these pencil lines. Sorry, I didn't find a device named lights. Alexa, be quiet. Jesus. You know, you can get, like, like I try and explain in all my videos, and it's your art piece, you guys. So, you know, spend as much time as you want to spend on it, right? Like, the more time that you spend on it, the better it's going to look. But for me, with this, this is an outdoor birdhouse, okay? It's going to get weathered. It's not perfect. It is what it is. And that's the bottom line. If you want to make a perfect birdhouse, well, make a perfect birdhouse. You know, these lines are, are nowhere near perfect. I just don't give a donkey crap. So anyways, I'll get these woods burned, these boards burnt in. And I don't always follow my lines. My lines are just there to give me an idea of what's going on, right? Ooh, hot. This pen gets super hot. That's, that's what I like about this pen. This wood burner. But you guys, start off with a cheap one. Just Carve Rob, if you go over to his YouTube channel, he's uh, he, he loves his cheap Chinese one. Studio on the lake has a expensive one and Ben if you watch this video. I'm sorry to hear about your um, Micro carvers aren't getting made anymore. I'm interested to hear what happened. Okay, so there's my wood pretend the woods going this way the wood slats, right? So now let's make it like there's a piece anyways. I'll just show you So here's a piece of wood We'll pretend it's cedar going this way, right? So they're bigger than the bricks, so we want to stagger them too put this one back so I'll just show you quickly here what I do with the nails I, I don't know who the the inventor of the, of 
inventor is of this, so, but whatever. Here's going to be some nail marks here, okay? You got to put them at the end of each board. So this will only be a quarter of the board, half the board, so we'll only put one nail mark up here, right? Don't be, fr don't be afraid to burn it in there deep. <sighs> Group deep says burn it deep. Okay, so there you can see that's what's going on. See your boards there? Um, my buddy Pete is an avid, uh, the mad scientist is an avid bird, he's a bird lover. And he says when you do these bird holes it's good to sand them inside, make them nice and smooth. And sand around to the back. Look Pete, I made the little baby bird some stairs. To get out. Hop, 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 hop. Anyways, I'll get this wood burning done and I'll be back. Okay, so you can see here the door is done. I just put a little thing in the bottom there, just alive. The wall is done, not the, 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 the door. Okay, you can see here the front wall is done. I just put a little extra um, uh, thing in the door just to liven it up a bit. Right, so you can see all the boards are in there. So now let's move on to the flowers. So I'm gonna, I, I've already undercut these bricks here with the wood burner, meaning deep in there. Now I'm gonna undercut this flower, which means I'll just show you what I'm gonna do. I know I rush a lot. It's better if I slow down so you guys kind of get what's going on. So I'll do this all the way around the flower. And these these flower sides are going to have uh, wood panels on them too, right? I'm, I'm going to paint this, these petals uh, yellow. Why not, right? You can. I was originally just going to make wood beams and... My, like from the first video, I was going to make wood, like log sides and stuff, but you change your mind. That's why there's no need to, need to rush anything. Because you might change your mind. It's really like I really had to grab my hand and drag myself into this room to finish this birdhouse. But here I am, getting her finished. And when it's done, you move on to your next project. That's what it's all about. It's all about having fun, but sometimes there is those those projects where you're like, ah, oh, boy, I gotta go work on the friggin' birdhouse. So you can see how I'm going around there burning it, and then I'll just burn in between the petals. You guys can put as much much texture as you want on the petals or whatever you do. It just makes no sense for me to do that. Well, it makes sense, but I just, well, I don't want to do it. Okay, so I got um, the side walls and the face burnt in. So now for the roof. Uh, I'm not going to film doing the roof, but I'm going to make deep, deep cuts underneath the shingles. That will separate the shingles and in between the shingles. So see in about 30 billion years. Yep. Oh yeah, I gotta burn the fascia board in too. Okay, so all the burning's done. So you guys, when you're doing your birdhouses, the good thing about doing birdhouses, well, they're gonna be up in a tree or up in against somebody's house or somewhere, right? Or on a pole. So people aren't gonna be able to go and look at your piece up closely and analyze it and pick it apart, you know? You gotta think people are gonna be looking at it from long range. That's what art's about. If somebody goes right up to your piece and looks at it close and picks it away, well, tell them the F right off. So, you know, you look at that flower from here, well, it looks like a piece of junk. But if you look from it, look at it from back here, looks a lot better. And also, I want to say, I don't know if I'm going to say it in my talk over, I'll forget what I'm going to say, my voiceover. I like to carve these 
when they're not attached when the birdhouse isn't nailed together because number one it's a lot easier to carve them when they're separated so you can move it around with your hand easy right and number two the big thing I think is because I'm gonna brad nail this together when it's all to, when it's put together I'm gonna brad nail it right so that way you do not hit any nails with your with your cut saw or whatever burrs you want to use right to go in your Dremel okay so I'm also I still have to carve like this is the front piece let's see if I can figure get this and this is the side piece okay so this brick wraps around to this brick where my pinky finger is right so I'm still gonna have to carve that to make it complete right but I'll carve that I'm gonna crazy super glue this together first before I brad nail it right but while it's still apart well let's do some painting you guys can paint this thing any color you want it's your art guys I've decided I'm going to do the flower yellow, dollar store acrylic paint. The petals yellow, I'm going to do the inside of the flower red. I think those two colors go good together. I'm going to do the door red. And I'm going to do the fascia, well, I might do the door yellow. And I'm going to do the fascia board on the roof red. Yep, so flower petals yellow, door yellow, and uh, I just don't know. Oh, sorry, I do know I'm going to paint the bricks uh, gray. So these bricks will be gray, gray, and gray. Okay. Okay, so you see I got the paint in this paint tray here. I watered it down just a little bit, not too much. And it's simple. Just paint on your petals. I'm not a professional painter. And I decided I'm going to make the black, uh, the middle black, because it will look more kind of like a, I guess, a sunflower. I don't know what kind of flower this is. Do you? So then I can make the door and maybe the fascia red. I don't know. Just try and match your colors, whatever. Okay, so I'll get these two flower petals painted on. In the middle black and I guess well I'll be back okay so it doesn't look so good up close but when you I think it's all right um, I got the fascia boards painted so now the paints done not all of it though, because I still got to carve a bit more and paint a bit more when I get this whole thing together, right? I got to paint these bricks. I got to carve bricks in here, but I'll put it together and I'll finish that. Okay, I'm going to use uh, the CA glue that I got to snap it all together. I'll finish carving, then I'll put the braid nails in it, brad nails or whatever it is. So I think it's just best to let the wood sit, the, sorry, the paint sit overnight to dry properly. You can heat it up with a blow, uh, air gun, hot air gun or a hair dryer and stuff like that to make it dry. But I'm done for the day and I'm just going to give it a night to uh, dry. So I'll be back and I will try and finish this up tomorrow. You know what, uh, everyone? I think I'm going to leave this video here. This will be a three-part series. So this will be the second part because there's still a lot more work to do. And I just don't want to be the, the video to be too long. Or it just gets a little bit uh, repetitive. It gets a little bit boring, I think, anyways. So let's just leave this video here. And I promise the next video will be coming out the next day. So it will be a three-part series. The next video will be putting it all together. Um, I'm going to see tall. I'm not see tall. I'm going to friggin' poly shade it. And yeah, okay. Later. If you thought number one, building the house was shitty. And now you think this video... Carving the birdhouse was shitty. Well, make sure you subscribe because number three, putting together the birdhouse is going to be super shitty. <laughs>